Stewart. May I get a roll call vote, please? President Rick Webb? Yes. Vice President Byron Glennon? Yes. Director Ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Wallace? Yes. Director Greg Wood? Yes. I vote. Well, the record shows that at 6 10, we're out of closed session with a 5 0 vote. For this time, we will continue. Oh, there was, I'm sorry, folks. There was nothing to report out of closed session. At this time, we will continue with our open session, which is now 6 10, 6 11. And we'll continue with the open session. I'll read the public comment. At this time, any person may address the board on any subject, but then address the district's jurisdiction, which is not on the agenda. However, any non agenda matter will be referred to the staff for report and reaction at a subsequent board meeting, and no action can be taken on any such item discussed unless the action has been authorized in the section 54954.2 board of the government code. Any person may also address the board and any agenda matter from the time of marriage is discussed prior to board consideration and action. Speakers are requested to limit their comments to five minutes. This time I open the floor for public comments. Hearing none, I'll make a comment as a member of the public. Sure you have um, a, a little different than what I've done in the past. Um, I'm thinking of the term legacy, and I looked it up in my dictionary, and basically it said something received from an ancestor or predecessor. And then I added, from my thought thinking, it's not just something received from an ancestor or predecessor, but forgotten by future generations. This information was passed on to me by Dr. Shear. Uh, I think some probably even say, who's Dr. Shear um, when we're talking about legacy, but this information I want to give. Roseland Community Service District was established in August of 1966. Phyllis and I were married on August 28, 1965. There are total cast votes for establishing RCSD was 252 people voted to establish RCSD, 252 people. I do not remember voting, <laughs> but I know my mother and father did. RCSD was purchased from Lila Berg. Sam Berg had passed away, and their son Danny Berg uh, did not have, he had no interest in running the business. In fact, he's retired, he was a school administrator over in Henderson, and he's retired now. Um, uh, there were 213 yes votes and 28 no votes. Five directors were selected from 11 names that were submitted. Five directors and 11 names that were submitted. Uh, the leading vote getter got 197 votes, and that was Frank Pauley, Al's brother. And I knew, the, knew them. They were my dad's age or older, and everybody knows the the place they had there on Sarah Highway. The next vote getter was O.M. Wombecker. And he and Wombecker and Wallace Walling had the trailer park there, and we used to swim in the trailer park. W.W. Tra tra trailer Park. The third vote getter was a fellow named Ron Gray. He got 189 votes. And I remember him as a man, man, Ron Gray. Fourth. Uh, highest vote getter was Harold Gretzky, and we've got a plaque of Harold Gretzky right down there. He got 179 votes. And then Bill Black, who was in charge of all the maintenance at the school district, he was the fifth director, and he got 161 votes. The other people who were nominated, one was Walt Hummel, and Hummel Hall is named after his wife, Paul Dumas, and some of you might remember Paul, Paul Dumas. Joe DeGrasso at DeGrasso gas station there on Sierra Highway. Harold Chase, Cecil Manning, and I have to say Mac Purcell, because that's what it said, but I did not call him Mac Purcell. He was Mr. Purcell. Yep. He was a teacher at Southern Green Unified School District and eventually became a principal oh, there. Superintendent. Uh, superintendent eventually, too. Yeah. But uh, it's interesting. 252 people voted to start. RCSD. And that's kind of a legacy that uh, I guess 
unless somebody keeps passing it on, we'll we'll forget about it and those and, and the men that uh, were on the first board and, and chosen. Well, I'd like to comment on that, Brian. And first of all, that the history you bring to us, second and then Chasaruchi. What's even more amazing is that at this point, you you, you have the, 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 the drawback to pull all those things up, and you're talking about it like it was yesterday, so my compliments to you on that. And thirdly, if you stop doing it, I'm never going to speak to you again. <laughs> that is good stuff, Brian, for real. That is good stuff. Thank you very much for sharing. And, uh, some of that, like I said, uh, Dr. Shear was the one that stared up and gave it to me, and I went back through my stuff and, and, uh, and found it. And uh, I had a hard time calling him Bob Shear too. He was to me, he was Dr. <laughs> Dr. Shear. Dr. Shear. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, that's uh, cool. yeah. He was influenced. He did a lot of things for Roseman. He wanted to build a lot of things. There. It didn't happen even. Yeah. When you get a street name after you, you've done pretty good in you know, that time, I would argue on that one. So thank you very much. Is there anyone else for public comments? Okay, hearing none, I close public comments, and I open up the voluntary public uh, roll call via teleconference. If any member of the public uh, on teleconference wishes to identify themselves as present for the meeting, please do so. I'll open the floor for you now. Okay, hearing none. Is there, uh, John Joyce, are you there, sir? I'm actually covering for him. It's Amanda. Oh, good evening, Amanda. How are you? I'm doing great. This is the first time in a long time. <laughs> Would you like to identify yourself so we have you for the record for the Roseman News? Okay, I'm Amanda Garcia. I'm covering for John Joyce with Roseman News. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to be recognized? Okay, with that, with none, we close public uh, the, uh, the, uh, I mean, the roll call, and let's continue with the minutes. Okay, what I'd like to do, if possible, I would like to, uh, with the minutes here, we have M1, M2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They can be addressed in one motion. They can, perfect, uh, thank you. But identify one through six. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I would like the director to give me a motion for M1, M2, and M3. Can I get a motion for those? Or we have a VP, Glennon, can I have a second? I'll second. Director Wallace, a second. Can I get a roll call? President Rick Webb? Yes. Vice President Byron Glennon? Yes. Director... Uh, ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Wallace? Yes. Director Greg Wood? Yes. Will the, I vote. Will the record show that on, uh, under the minutes for M1, M2, and M3, there was a 5 0 vote? Now let's move down. Could I get a motion to approve M4, M5, and M6? So moved. Second. There was uh, Vice President went in a second by Director Stewart. May I get a roll call vote, please? President Rick Webb? Yes. Vice President Byron Glennon? Yes. Director Ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Wallace? Yes. Director Greg Wood? Yes. I vote. Will the record reflect that on M4, M5, and M6? M4, M5, and M6, so a 5 0 vote. Continuing with the agenda, we have the consent calendar, and that's uh, CC1. It's approval of the check voucher register from 10 15 20,000. I mean, 2021 to 10 18 2021. Have a motion for that, please. Roll move. Second. Vice President Glennon, second by Director Stewart. May I get a roll call vote, please? President Rick Webb? Yes. Vice President Byron Glennon? Yes. Director Ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Wallace? Yes. Director Greg Wood? Yes. I vote. The record reflect that for CC1, 5 0 vote. Let's continue down to the uh, presentation and it's its uh, Number one, the water reclamation plan update. And we have Brock Smith. Brock, are you on, sir? Yes, I am. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. How are you? Good. What do you have before? Um, I'm sorry. You have before, sir. Thank you. At the wastewater treatment plant, the contractor continued through the startup and testing phase since the last board meeting. They conducted the seven day test on the BioLac base, and that is a, a freshwater test. But the equipment is functioning as it should, so we passed the seven day test on the aeration basin. That also includes the testing of the two new blowers that were installed in the blower building. During that testing, the rep from the blower company identified one issue with one of the blowers, and they will be returning with replacement parts to correct that issue. 
The 48-hour test was also conducted on the clarifier, the new secondary clarifier, and that task. Um, in addition to the testing, the contractor completed the installation of the chemical lines to the clarifier and the RAS line, completed the spreading of base around the work area, and completed the coating of distribution box four. And that concludes my update for the wastewater treatment plan. Thank you. Does the record have any questions? Okay, let's move on to public hearing item number one. At this time, folks, we have uh, an introduction of ordinance number 20111, the test being the uh, director's compensation. It says, I'm introducing this ordinance 2021.1, an ordinance of the board of directors of the Roseland Community Services District, County of Kern, State of California, adjusting the board of directors' compensation. I will waive the reading of the ordinance set a date for a public hearing for January 12, 2022. And I would like to get a motion from a director a second so we can further discuss this. So moved. And Vice President Glenn. Second. Second Director Wallace. Okay, at this time, I'd like to take a roll call. Oh, you'll be for the vote, yes. I'm sorry, thank you, Steve. Can we get a roll call? So we have a motion by Vice President Glenn. We have a second by Director Wallace. Can I roll call, please? President Rick Webb? Yes. Vice President Byron Glennon? Yes. Director Ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Walls? Yes. Director Greg Wood? Yes. I vote. And I might add, this is only introduction for the uh, ordinance. The ordinance will be heard in January, on January 12th, and the hearing will be conducted at that time. We have to introduce this ordinance um, prior to uh, the hearing. So that's what we've accomplished tonight. Do you tell what time do you tell? What are you raising it to? Or can you tell it now? No discussion on it now. Uh, the hearing will be held uh, on the 12th. Okay. Okay. Let's continue with new business. Approve the minimum, the MOU, the, the MOU agreement with the State Association of Counties Finance Corporation Tax Refund and compliance system. Uh, Brock Smith, you have the floor. Thank you again. The MOU before you tonight is an agreement between Rosemont CSD and CSAC, the California State Association of Counties, to allow the district to participate in the Caltrex program. This program will allow the district to uh, collect delinquent revenues, delinquent bills, uh, by going through the franchise tax board, a clearing house, and assessing those penalties or, or collecting that debt from uh, customers' tax returns. If they're eligible for a tax return, then we can collect outstanding bills from those tax returns. Um, it's a very streamlined program. There's, there's counties, cities, special districts throughout the country that are using the same program. It was just recently introduced in the state of California. And by entering this, we can submit to collect revenue as early as next year's tax returns. Uh, this is virtually a, a revenue neutral to the district in recovery. We will initially uh, have a, a cost of approximately $25 to $30 per account, and it will be reimbursed uh, through the collection process. This is for people of those. Or actually, actually, they will recover it in the collection and will remit uh, that cost to the collecting entity. This is for people that owe the district money, right? Correct. I do have a question, Steve. So in the past, we've tried moving production agencies uh, when people had outstanding balances. This is a little bit smoother, a little bit cheaper, I would guess. It's a, little, a lot cheaper, uh, $30 per unit uh, when you're looking at a 50% uh, percent, uh, exchange for collection on the normal side. So for some of our accounts, $30 is awful cheap uh, when you're looking at hundreds and sometimes in today's environment could be up as much as a thousand or more. And, this, and I was also looking at this here uh, since they do it to everyone. I mean, this is, I mean, they're doing it to everyone. But we always talk about capturing lost revenue. Right. 
I guess it's probably one of the more efficient ways of capturing that lost level. Yep. I would also like to add that as of this afternoon, the district has 732 past due accounts, totaling $138,493. So this would be a great way to recapture some of that lost revenue. It would be, yeah. Now, did they approach us we approached them? They approached us with the program uh, through uh, CSAC, which is the California Association of Counties. Uh, this came out of, I think originally, out of the National Association of Counties, and it's been do being done across the country. So they brought it to California through CSAC. CSAC presented it to uh, local governments like ours. Sounds like something good. I do. Uh, can I get a motion for approval, please? So moved. Second. We have a uh, motion by Vice President Glennon, second by Director Stewart. Have a roll call vote, please. President Rick Webb? Yes. Vice President Byron Glennon? Yes. Director Ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Wallace? Yes. Director Greg Wood? Yes. I vote. Will the record show that for ND1, the approval of the MOU but with the uh, California State Association of Counties and Rosemary Conservative uh, Community Service District was a 5 0 vote? Uh, that's good news. Uh, okay, let's move down to MB number two. Approve the disposal of district property listed on the staff report. Uh, let's get a motion that we have some discussion on it. Uh, have a motion for MB number two. So moved. Vice President Lennon. A second. Director Wallace. <laughs> Yeah, I know you're going to tell me no, but that's okay. And I know we're going to go back to the gifting of public funds, so I'm good with that. But I saw those vehicles and anything. We can't donate that to the school for the high school to work on any of that stuff or anything. Or I, I believe the donation uh, is a question for... Uh, John Colmar, and because I don't believe a donation for that purpose is considered a gift of public funds. Yeah, there are some, yeah, I was going to say there are some, some donations that are considered not to be gift of public funds, but they're very particularized, and <laughs> I will look up for you and get you an answer on specifically what can go where and under what circumstances, because it's not, it's not a one-size-fits-all rule. Okay. Well, uh, high school still has a shop. I don't believe so. Yeah, they do. I think they, they do. An auto shop? Yeah. I think so. I think they... Oh, they worked on my son's car. I know that is truck. Somebody did up there. Somebody <laughs> up there. Anyway, uh, I, the, the option part I think is good for a few bucks back, but if we could maybe help something along the way uh, with some of one of those cars. Yeah, I don't think we, we ever heard about the hybrid. <laughs> but uh, maybe, John, if you could look up that left, Steve, no, and then I can vote on you guys to continue with it, but if we could, you know, if something be possible. Well, if we, if we vote on this, to approve it, uh, and we come back that we can, we can cut that okay. uh, if the maker of the motion would amend it yeah. to to that effect. That if we can donate it, if it's possible, then uh, we could look at that. Uh, Vice President, would you would be willing to make an uh, adjustment amendment to your yeah, motion? Yeah, I'm fine. I did have one question about uh, that camel jet trailer. It, it can be used in some other state. <laughs> uh, I don't There's know the condition of it. So it does have some value? <laughs> it, it would have some value. There are there are multiple issues with that camel jet trailer. The the biggest issue being that the motor itself is not compliant with today's emission standard. It also has a broken water storage tank throughout youth. The district staff has repaired the water storage tank multiple times. But as a trailer, um, it does have some value as a trailer if someone wanted to strip the equipment off of it or uh, repair the tank and get it can potentially be used out of state but it's a it's a very old uh sewer jetting trailer this is all off so, you know just a just a thought you know byron brings up a good point that you know because of the tier levels of uh, the california uh, air resources board 
and their restrictions that they're forced a lot of public agencies to get rid of useful equipment and, and it usually ends up in some other entity enjoying the benefits of it in another state. And uh, just my question for you, Brock, is, is how long is that camel jet trip? It's been a long time since I've seen it. I can't really remember. Uh, I'm going off of memory here, but it's probably been six years since we've even started the trailer. Um, that was used a lot before we got the previous combination vacuum truck, uh, which was in 2009. So prior right. to 2009, it was used on a regular basis. It was used intermittently from 2009 to probably 2013. And since then, it has that part. So as a well, trailer, how, it does hold some is, value. How long is the trailer? The, the deck of the trailer is probably about 14 feet, um, overall length, uh, roughly 18 feet. I was trying to wonder, because we had been talking about in our, our uh, sewer committee meetings about building an emergency response trailer for uh, tin can pipe uh, to respond for uh, potential overflows and things of that nature. Would it be feasible for the district personnel to convert that trailer into that purpose? We actually already have a 24-foot trailer that's left over from the parks department that, that's being planned for that conversion. Uh, we just pulled some okay. other equipment off of that, so that will be used for that conversion. Okay. Very good, then. All right, that, that's the only question I had. And we still need to second or a motion to second the amendment? Uh, they actually do have to. We have that. Uh, yeah, we asked the uh, Vice President Glenn about if you going to make them uh, amend their motion. Yeah. The amendment. Yeah. The motion. Exactly. Amend the amendment that it's possible after John reports back to you that maybe some that could be donated to the school uh, automated department, automotive department. Uh, yeah, that would be, I gave them my, uh, had a diesel rabbit. Yeah. There's such a diesel rabbit. <laughs> they took the diesel, I gave them the and they took the diesel engine how to use it that's where it display of working on the diesel. Oh, I'm sure. I don't know about the auto program now. No, they have they got my son to graduate in twenty twenty. Oh, they first. At that time they did. So some change. Okay. Yeah, I think they still have it. Well we have the motion, it's been amended by Vice President Glennon that uh if in the event that uh legal counsel reports that that we something can be donated for that to be considered to see and your staff will make a determination, maybe meet with them and see which one would fit best. I know the, high, the hybrid may not be the answer for what they're trying to do there. As soon as I get a word back from uh, John Comar, uh, we'll work on that if it's possible. Yeah, if it's possible. And if okay. not, uh, you will hear from us again. Okay. So can I, so with that, okay, sir. When, uh, and I gave them a van, too, the school of van. Um, and all they did was give me a slip that I gave it to them and I was the one that determined the value of it. They didn't put a value on it at all. Uh, That's for tax purposes. Yeah. Yeah, so we can all set our hundreds of billions of dollars roll of very stupid. <laughs> okay, we have a motion, we have a second and the it's an amended second. Uh they'll report you'll report back. Can I have a roll call vote? President yeah. Rick Witt? Yes. Vice President Byron Glennon? Yes. Director Ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Wallace? Yes. Director uh, Greg Wilson? Yes. I vote. For the record, for five, we have a 5 0 vote on MB number two. Moving down to MB number three. Uh, Steve, before we uh, go to vote on, do you have any insight into this for us? For, uh, for, uh, what, oh, we need a motion and we'll discuss it. I'm sorry. Uh, MB number three, the council November 24th and December 23rd meetings. 22nd. 22nd meeting of the regular uh, RCSD. Can I get a motion, please? No move. Vice President Glennon, now be a second. I'll second. I was going to let Greg, but I'll second. We have a motion by Vice President Glennon, second by Director Wallace. Now let's have a discussion. Steve, can you tell us what's going on here with the chair? Um, normally, during uh, these times of the year, November and December, we um, um, cancel these meeting and in this year the way the meeting falls during the week uh, is what generates the dates that you're approving here. Um, in MB4, uh, similar to MB3, 
uh, it's the same thing. Um, and we can always have a, a special meeting. Meet meet right? okay. Fair enough. Can I get a roll call vote on NB number N B number three, please? So moved. I think you guys voted on that Sorry, already. We need a vote. <laughs> Actually, roll call vote. Vice President Rick Webb? Yes. Uh, Vice President Byron Glennon? Yes. Board Member Director uh, Ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Wallace? Yes. Director uh, Greg Wood? Yes. I vote. We're rushing for select on MB number three, five zero vote. Then move us down to MB number four to approve, to approve the quote of the district office from December 27th through December 29th. And the reason for this also is. We do this every year also. However, it's not uh, that we don't have staff working. Staff has, uh, there are some staff that uh, don't want to take it off. They're using their own time when they take off, uh, but we have a crew that is still working. Okay, Steve, let, let me get the motion so we can discuss it ourselves. Okay. So can I get a motion for on EMB number four? Go move. Vice President Glennon, motion. May I get a second? Second. Oh, Director Wood. Okay, we'll give that to you. Okay, so we have a motion by Vice President Glenn and a second by Director Wood. I do have a question. The this has to the 29th, which is that Wednesday. And uh, New Year's Eve is on the 30th, that Friday. Is there a reason why you just won't go all the way to the end of the week? Because we don't work on Friday. Well, how about Thursday? <laughs> that Thursday is recognized as our holiday. Right. Oh, that's a, oh, okay. You can do it either the 29th or go clear around to the Monday. Okay, okay. Okay, so the 31st and the 1st are both holidays. Right. I mean, legal holiday types. Uh, well, no, the 31st falls on a weekend. The 31st is a Friday. Oh, the 1st is a Saturday. I'm sorry. Yeah. 31st is a Friday. The district call. Okay. So that's all you got to do. Okay. All right. So we're just looking at uh, to the 29th. Okay. So we have a motion, and we have a second, and I see why you, what you look, I'm looking at it now. Okay. What were you saying? They're on time? And they, they don't get paid. So, so we're closing the office. If they want to come in, they can still come in and do their normal path, but they're given the option to use the kitchen. Right. Okay. Because most of the time, they, people will take the vacation time anyway. So. Right. We need to uh, roll call vote on this place. President Rick Webb? Yes. Vice President Byron Leonard? Yes. Director Ben yes. Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Wallace? Yes. Director Greg Wood? Yes. I vote. The director is 12, respecting on MV number four, a 5 0 vote. Let's move down to the director's comments. And Greg, since you're outside, I'm going to give you the floor first. Go ahead, sir. You have it. I uh, just uh, like to wish everybody well and hope everybody's staying healthy. Um, it's been a long time since we've been able to all get back to normal life. I'm hoping that'll all change before too much longer. And uh, with that, that's all I have. Thank you, guys. Director Wallace? I don't have anything. Director Stewart? I don't have anything either. Director Blair? The girls, Roseman High School girls volleyball team won their first round in CIF last night. Uh, and Thursday at 6 o'clock, they're playing second round. They're playing Wasco here at the, at the gym in Roseman. And Roseman won a football game, won one, one yeah. game. Two. And if they win, they'll play the next game here. And they, they, because of their the way they seeded them, Every game will be here except the final game. Really? Uh, oh, and uh, the final game could be the we were number two seeded. Number one seed was uh, Taft. Okay. So if Taft goes all the way and we go all the way, we could be Taft. And wherever that, I think it's down. I don't know where it is. Probably up north. Taft is uh, uh, west of Bakersfield. Yeah. And it's about 45 minutes out of Bakersfield, 30 minutes. Yeah. And they have a very nice facility. But we play Wasco Park. Yeah, you know, in Maricopa, you supposed to used to have a high school, and they picked the kids up at Fraser Park, <laughs> and they had the choice of going to Maricopa or Bakersfield, but they closed that high school in Maricopa, 
It's closed now. Maricopa's right next to Taft. Sure. How far far, Steve? Uh, about seven, eight miles. Something they like made that. that movie, that movie, that football game yeah. at Maricopa. Well, I haven't officiated a football game in two years, or a basketball game, or volleyball. So I miss it. Good for them. Good for them. Okay, so what I have to report about two things. First of all, I attended the landscape show last week up in Long Beach, and we've been talking about water con- water conservation, which we're kind of drifting over to water efficiency. I think the community as a whole is conserved all they can, so we're looking at the efficiency part. But the interesting part, everything at the show was about water efficiency type of uh, uh, sprinklers, timers, or whatever everything. I guess smart everything. Everything ties into an iPad or a phone. So if you're not on board with those, uh, it's better. But what's interesting is they had a system where we as a district, if the, if the community was wired, on all the irrigation of the lawns from the district, <laughs> which would be interesting <laughs> in real life. But uh, I got information for Steve that I haven't got to him, but I'll be getting to him. And the interesting part, I spoke to a guy at a nursery, a good corporate nursery, but uh, we talked about plant material, and I told him uh, about our community. He was interested in doing a conference call with Steve and myself, so we'll work on getting that there. That was probably the highlight of the show, and the mere fact that People are actually getting out one place and again doing things. It wasn't a gigantic show, but it was a good show. And the other thing I'd like to bring up, and we've talked about this in our emergency prep committee, that guy gave a presentation on fire uh, preparedness. An interesting thing he brought up, and we don't really have that problem here, but he talks about if your home doesn't have the full <coughs> and all this cut down, and the fire department can't say we defend it, they don't defend it. If you don't have things, and that's not way our problem here. I think it just makes sure we have most of the things accessible. But that was an interesting thing there. And then we had a uh, we had a water efficiency meeting Monday that kind of drifted into a disaster prep. And one of the things that Steve's going to be working on, if you have these for the tracks, you're kind of cut off from the city or the community. So uh, Greg brought up some good ideas about that. So we're going to be looking at that down the way. There's some possible possible things in case an event there. How do we get people from one side to the other? Because if you think about it, there's only that one little market, the restaurant, and the Thai place for its food places. Anything else on this side here? So I'm sure that uh, it's a workable solution, but uh, I guess Steve had said him and the staff would contact the county and start looking at possibilities to go. So that's good news. The other thing I would ask all the directors. Let's look at your committee which that you're on, and I know that we haven't had a lot of committee meetings or whatnot. I'd like every committee to at least try to meet once between now and the end of the year and kind of give us at our last meeting, give a year-end report if there's anything coming out of your meeting, your committee of significance. As we know, we're going to be switching positions. We'll be getting a new uh, president, a new VP, and I'd like to give them a good slate with their stuff as they move forward. So I'd ask all the directors, look at the committees you're on and look to get you one more committee meeting in so we can get an end of year committee report out and then uh, we'll have a smooth transition. You switch presidents into the end The godfather down there. Oh, uh, I thought of it was two years, sir. Two years, been two. It's been two years. Okay, Mr. President? Yes, sir. Uh, just a point of correction there that you will be board president until uh, December of 2022. And you got another year. I do? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, disregard all that. Byron, I was setting you up for, okay. All right, well, thank you. I still think it's an excellent idea to have a summary that comes from each uh, chair in each committee. But we'll still do the committee part. Uh, okay, I thought. They thought, I thought you were stepping down. Well, no, I think you were taking care of me, Mr. General Manager. <laughs> that was what? No, I, I, I thought, okay, forget it. Anyway, we, I'd like to get all the committees. Oh, by the way, I have everyone here. Greg and the guys are here. Yeah. The committees you're on, look at them. If you entertain, change the committee or whatnot, let me know what I'd like to do. Just spread the wealth a little bit. I'd like, if you've been on a committee more than five years, Consider a move. 
all I'm going to say. Consider a move. The reason I'm saying okay. that because we have the same people, the same place, and we have unique expertise. But the way you develop another expertise, consider. Don't have to, consider. Anyway, that's what I have. Uh, let's move down to the general counsel. Uh, John, you have anything for us, sir? Nothing tonight, folks. Okay. Uh, general Manager, Steve Perez, you have the floor. Yeah, you, you touched on water efficiency, so my report's going to be in, in regard to water efficiency versus water conservation. The Roseland Community Services District has begun the discussion regarding our community being asked to conserve another 15% of our water usage. Although we all understand there is a drought and we all need to do our share to address the requests of our regulators as it's uh, best, in the best interest of all concerned. Having said that, it also needs to be pointed out that the community of Roseman has gone above and beyond in their desire to aid in conservation. Just drive around the community and you can almost count on one hand the number of green yards in the community. A stark contrast to many cities I have driven through and seen just the opposite. Again, our elected representatives act out without any idea what some communities are doing or have done or what they are not doing. Let me set the record straight. The community of Roseland was asked to cut back 20% as were all communities in the state. The community stepped up and responded by not only meeting the mandate, but exceeding the mandate and cut back 42%. The community bears the scars of this cutback and now the governor has requested our community to cut back another 15%. Uh, this is absurd. How about utilizing some of the vast amounts of data you've required us to compile each year and determine who is and who isn't doing their fair share and place the appropriate cut backs on them, and if they're not willing to cut back, sanction them into compliance. I may sound harsh, but I don't mean to be. It's just the community cannot afford another mandate. But we have come up with another approach, efficiency versus conservation. Here are some ideas that may accomplish the intent of the mandate, but not sound like mandate to cut back. Low flow kitchen faucets. Low flow faucets can reduce water to 2.2 gallons a minute or less. Good news is almost all faucets today are low flow already, so it may be that uh, all is necessary is a change out. Faucet aerators. Attach the aer aerator to reduce the amount of water that comes out at one time. Byron's favorite. Can save an average family 2,900 gallons a year and uh, uh, reduce it to two gallons per minute. Low flow bathroom faucets can save up to 30% compared to conventional faucets. Dual flush toilets, low flush for li liquids, higher for solids. Toilet flushing accounts for 30% of your indoor water use. 10 ways to save water. Turn water off when not in use. Prepare water leaks. Wash full loads. Wash by hand. Adjust your sprinkler heads. Locate the water turnoff switch. Update your landscaping, possibly a desert scape. Install water saving appliances. Inspect toilets for leakage. And I might point out uh, on toilets and leakage. You may walk by your toilet one moment and never hear water running. Then you can walk in and all of a sudden it comes on, but it's only on for a minute or two. That means the flapper in the toilet tank is warm or obstructed and it may be that all you need to do is replace the flapper and if that goes on and on and on and on all day long that's a significant amount of water when you add it all up uh, insulate water pipes to reduce breakage more information will be produced to ask folks to be efficient with their water use our efforts will be increased in this area in weeks to come information will be produced and disseminated to the community. Um, uh, Rick and I, uh, President Webb and I talked about um, washers. Um, some washers uh, today, and if you look at the Energy Star labels on most appliances, uh, they do save. Uh, an LG, for instance, 3,662 gallons a year. LG, 3,841 gallons per year. 
Samsung, 4,593 gallons a year. Now, these are all just examples of how some efficiencies have been done in the appliance arena. And um, we'll try to capture that, put it on our uh, social media, on our webpage, and try to produce some ideas for the community that if you would like to be more efficient, uh, which we're encouraging efficiency over conservation, and it will accomplish uh, virtually the same thing. That's a good report, Steve. Uh, reading that in, first of all, I learned something. And the reason, well, I was talking with Steve about it, and I was introduced to my tank being pulled, the wash machine. I looked at it the other day, it was about a quarter of the weight at the bottom. So I'm thinking we have these two laundry mats in the district. You know, are they used to other appliances, are the older or the new ones? But those numbers you were talking about, could you imagine if every third family was saving that kind of water? You know, just that, not everyone across the board, but I mean, you also look at the cost of them, but I mean, to just be able to provide good information because when they go shopping, they could be looking for those type of appliances there, but not uh, get in front of our little local maintenance, hand, maintenance handy guys was, you know, he'd get on board, he'd run a little campaign for that. Pop those out. You know what those the irony is in uh, water conservation or efficiency? We have a county of Kern that requires landscaping, and they require a certain amount of landscaping to be done. When uh, my father-in-law built their house, they were required to produce a landscaping uh, plot, and they landscaped a lot. Uh, when he passed away, we had to uh, care for uh, my mother-in-law and take care of that. And it was an exorbitant amount of water. Now, all of the shrubs along the driveway are gone, dead. Uh, the front yard is dirt, weeds, and the backyard is in the same condition. The only things that are green now are the trees and some of the uh, rose bushes. Um, it's, it's sad to, to, to look at that, number one. Number two, go around the community and see this very same thing. Other people are doing the same thing. But they've got to the point where I couldn't stand the two-foot-tall weeds in the front backyard and went out and hoed every one of them. I proceeded both of those yards, got it going again, and the water that we cut back to just couldn't uh, keep it going. And... Now it's dirt, and I gotta tell you, the back patio is full of dust all the time. It comes in the house, it permeates everything. Uh, it's not healthy, it's not healthy for, for us or anybody else for that matter because it just blows everywhere. So hopefully efficiency will take, uh, take root and in uh, Roseman and because I know that the community should be committed or a job well done in conservation. Okay. We've met numbers before they were, we've met the numbers before the date was due, we had met our numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. Good presentation, Steve. Thank you. Uh, let's continue down in the No. No, okay. Let's go on to John O'Brock uh, with the uh, public works update. John O'Brock, who's there? Uh, you have Brock again. Uh, uh, sure. Go ahead, the floor. Thank you. I just wanted to provide a brief update on uh, what the Public Works staff has completed since the last board meeting. Since the last board meeting, Public Works staff cleaned 7,500 feet of sewer mains. We inspected and treated 39 sewer manholes, repaired eight service line leaks, and completed our monthly meter reading. Okay, that's it? That's it. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. If there's nothing else, I entertain a motion for an adjournment, please. Hold on. Uh, Vice President. Uh, uh. <laughs> I didn't get it quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Motion by Director Stewart, down with second. Second. Vice <laughs> President Clinton, seven. Motion by Director Stewart, the Vice President, uh, motion by, uh, second by Vice President Clinton for an adjournment. May I get a roll call vote, please? President Rick West? Yes. Vice President uh, Byron Glennon? Yes. Director Ben Stewart? Yes. Director Alfred Gwold? Yes. Director Greg Woods? Yes. I vote. Yes. Would the record show that uh, what? You have six, eight, 655? 655. 655. The meeting's adjourned. <laughs>